Whiskey Tango Victor. Welcome to the vehicle. Okay, so it's been a few weeks now since I've done anything. That's basically because life's been busy and I've been working. So I've had a few requests from viewers and from a few good friends of mine <coughs> of uh, expanding on the first aid range to vehicle kits. And it's always tough, isn't it? Everyone wants to see a review on a vehicle kit. Well, what the fuck is a vehicle kit? Well, vehicle kit is just something that lives in a vehicle, I suppose. Um, and I always answer people the same when they say, "Can you do me a? Can you make me up a vehicle kit?" Uh, as I said before, <clears throat> as I tried to explain before, first aid kits are specific. They're specific to the task you're going to do, and they're specific to the expertise of the person who's going to use the first aid kit because there's no point in me putting in stethoscopes or IV injections or IM injections or <clears throat> I know lung deflating devices advanced airways what's the point if someone's just first aid trained and also you know am I going to go I'm going to use it in a vehicle I'm going to just go on holidays I'm just going to be driving around the streets, am I going to go into some, am I going to Syria, am I going to the sandpit again, am I going to go on active operations? What's the threat? It's a, it's a risk assessed type of environment, isn't it? You've got to assess the type of environment you're going to operate in. <clears throat> am I going to go remote? In which case I'm going to be away from medical aid for, I don't know, until I get a signal on my phone. I'm not going to get advanced medical care, even if I wanted it. So, are you going to start putting EPIRBs into your vehicle kits? So, that's how dependent things are on the environment. So, what I'm going to do today, uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to go three different kits. So I'm going to go for a basic kit that I've got in my vehicle, just a first aid kit. I'm going to go for a medium sized kit that I've built and, and then my ultimate large kit that I travel with when I'm going on operations. Remote islands to do med cover. <clears throat> I suppose that can be loosely termed as um, a first aid kit. First aid kit, med kit, like I said, it all depends. I'm a fairly advanced paramedic skills. So I sometimes carry more advanced stuff. Now that saying, um, on this first kit, this first kit is just gonna be a first aid kit. So something I bought, I rarely buy first aid kits from the shelf, but this one was pretty good. <clears throat> It's the modulator, first aid kit. It's a standard workplace kit um, that I have found. It works really, really well. It's a modular system. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, look, <clears throat> I've, I've developed these stickers as well. They're standardized signs for most things. Uh, you can see we've got eye care, we've got dressings, burn care. But what there doesn't seem to be in the marketplace at the moment is an icon for tourniquets. So any first aid kit I put a tourniquet in, I actually mark with a tourniquet. So when I grab it, I know that it's got this life-saving piece of equipment in. Or if I had to grab, if I had a choice of grabbing one or two kits, I wanted to grab the kit with the tourniquet in. So that's the um, that's the symbol that I've developed um, and had some stickers made up for. It works pretty well for me. So on to the review. Modulator is what it says on the cover. It's it's a modulated first aid system. First aid kits are like there's just so many of them. There's just so many of them. Sometimes they're just pushed into a into a bag. Sometimes they're really quite well laid out, like this one. Um, quite often, and I'll go into this again. Quite often when they say, oh, um, I've got a, a vehicle first aid kit. Well, what does that mean? Normally, it means that there's a thousand dressings in there. You know, there's number, there's all these different types of dressings you can get. I mean, a dressing is a dressing is a dressing. Really, isn't it? Like, unless you're going to go to a war on Bosnia, or you go to the sandpit, or you're expecting IEDs to go off left, right and centre, you don't need a thousand dressings in your first aid kit. Dressings take up room. Okay? And the, the, I guess the reason what makes a first aid kit a vehicle first aid kit, well, I wouldn't want to be traveling with this in my bag. Why is that? Because it's big and it's heavy and it'll take up half the bag. When I'm traveling on vehicle-based ops, 
great. Like, you know, it's the back of a vehicle. I've got so much room to put things inside. So I guess that is my description. That's my term for a vehicle based first aid kit. It's a first aid kit that's bigger than I'd normally carry, can fit inside a vehicle. That's it for, for me. So this is it, nice and green. Like oh, you see my other ones, my other ones are black. Probably not the best color to have a first aid kit. Looks pretty sexy, looks pretty stealthy, looks a little bit like noir. But you know, when you want to grab something in a normal everyday environment, you want it to be nice and visible. Green is the kind of international color for medical these days. Red for fire, that type of stuff. So anyway, this is really, really good. <clears throat> nice little carry handle. On the back, if you want to, this is Australian. This is, a, these, they sell these in Perth. I don't think it's a Perth thing. It's, I think it's an Australian thing. It's uh, manufactured in Australia. There we go, ISO 13485, whatever ISO that is. I mean, it's got a standard these days, but it's pretty good. On the back is a list of contents. So should you not know your shit, then you can sit here and you're bored and you're watching people wandering across the road you can actually read what's got in it i'm not going to go through that you'll find out what he got in it anyway basically lots of dressings and a few other bits and pieces <clears throat> nice little handle padded handle uh zips not sure they're ykk zips but end of the day like this isn't a war-torn environment it's a zip isn't it <clears throat> nice clamshell type of construction so as you can see I'll put a little bit more stuff in here now I carry these these are PCR forms um, well, I'll go through a story um, how good is this kit well I was actually traveling uh, on and this is this is this is a vehicle based first aid kit isn't it I was actually traveling in Perth Saturday morning minding my own business going towards an appointment to pick something up and um, lo and behold three or four cars in front of me some guy got knocked off his motorbike um, he was down on the ground he uh, the car pulled over a bunch of people I don't often stop um, but this guy was on the ground so therefore he probably needed some help there were some people there um, I just said hi I'm a paramedic can I help Sometimes they say no, sometimes, most times they say yes, thanks very much. No one had a first aid kit in their vehicles. There must have been eight vehicles there. No one had a first aid kit. Goes to show that in life, in Perth, in Australia, people only do first aid courses mainly for their jobs. They get paid to do them or if you need them for a specific license, like if you're in security. Or your nurse, you need to, you need to have your your, security, your first aid ticket. Otherwise, people have to pay like hundred, two hundred dollars to go on a first aid course every three years. I find as a paramedic in Perth, <clears throat> in fact, I found as a paramedic anywhere in the world, not many people outside the military environment know anything about first aid. Anyway, cut a long story short because it's getting to be quite a long story. Uh, I stopped. No one had a first aid kit. Um, I told someone back of the vehicle another good reason you know these nice bright colors like go to the back of the vehicle you find a green case that's the first aid kit can you go and get it for me I was busy assessing the patient and talking to the emergency services at that time why do I get to that I'll get to that because <clears throat> it was brilliant you know, it worked very very well it worked very well um, probably better than some of the kits I make up because everything here is looks professional it's modulized and people with basic first aid knowledge can grab it and use it. Let's face it, your first aid kit might be used on you. You might be the one having that accident. You might be the one that a bystander comes over, finds your first aid kit and is able to use it because it's well laid out. With my other kits I'll be reviewing, they're individual to me, you know, they're stealthy black. So you're going back of a black car, look for a black bag that might be medical kit, might be tactical kit, might be anything. You know, I do have some signs on mine, but quite often I don't. So another advantage, distinct advantage of having a first aid prepared bag, or even if the bag, the sack is a commercial sack, then you can tell, other people can tell whether it's a first aid kit. 
So <coughs> there's a list of ingredients in here, a list of ingredients, list of um, items in here. Now I'll try not to get these all over the place. Just drop the book. I'll get that in a second. Um, I don't use the book. It's good for recording details. So I have developed this. It's a uh, patient care form. Okay, uh, I just have these because they're very good for me to jot down and when I hand over to my services I use these. Otherwise, <clears throat> this is what we've got. Um, all apart from, um, I'll start with the tourniquet. That's my Rax tourniquet. I'm not a great fan of the Rax tourniquet, I must admit. I don't think they work so well, but they are really big because they're light and they're fairly inexpensive. They are quite effective, I've found. I've not used one of these on a live human. I've not even used one of these on a um, injured or a, a, a test lab uh, animal, which I have done with the cat and with the soft tea. Soft tea is my favorite tourniquet. Uh, just put that in there. Anyway, anyway this is the wrap. <clears throat> Once again, tourniquets. Look at the color. You know, you, why do you want to buy black tourniquets? When you come across a patient, if you're further on down the line, and I'm a paramedic picking up a patient who's had a tourniquet on, with the excitement and people that are maybe not too experienced in it, uh, too experienced in tourniquets, they quite often forget the fact that the patient's got a tourniquet on. It's covered. It's black. It's it's fairly invisible, and we only find it in the operating theatre or in the ED. You know, kind of five hours later, three hours later, possibly still might be problematic for a tourniquet so if you're going to buy a tourniquet if you're going to keep it in your kit if you're not in a war-torn environment or a covert tactical unit then i don't see the reason why you shouldn't be having a nice brightly colored bright orange bright green um tourniquet this is uh it's got a little bit of a sandway anchor on it for those old school that uh, used to deal with tourniquets with red rubber tubing and a sandway anchor this is a basic design on that it's a stretchy piece of cord that you can wrap around and it does stop the bleeding. I've used it on models. So that's my tourniquet. Everything else here is modulized. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through all these modules. I mean, they speak for themselves. But I think this is really, really good. Only because... Lovely funky colours. Okay, that's a bit of a plus, isn't it? If someone, one of the kids, hurts themselves graze a little boo-boo knee, then I'm not going to go rooting through like a whole heap of other bits and pieces just to get the band-aids. The band-aids are in the module, the band-aid module. Snake bite kit, okay, we live in Australia, so there's a snake bite kit in here. You can see my other kits, so I've got my own snake bite kit. We'll, we'll have a look at that. I'll probably open that up so I can show you. Trauma module, um, the tourniquet, uh, when I get around to it, will probably live in the trauma mod module. Because once again, these are Velcros. You can just whip these out and throw them around to people. So this is what happened in the in the in the car crash. Did I get to finish that story? No, probably didn't. Um, so car crash, yeah. Guy come off his bike. I dropped up. Yeah. So they grabbed. That's where I was. I was going to start saying, yeah. That's why you need a nicely covered bag. So um, bystander went, followed my directions, got my my first aid kit. In fact, this first aid kit here. Um, and, and that was it, like, there was two or three um, first aiders there. I was busy directing uh, EMS and giving a hand over to the EMS system. The guy wasn't critical, I'd done my primary assessment, he wasn't critical at all, he was a little bit shocked because he'd just come off his bike. Um, probably one thing that isn't in here that I often keep is a pair of snip snips, nice trauma shears that I've done a review on, uh, is my favourite trauma shears, so I cut, cut it cut his uh, gear off so I could examine him. Look, end of the day was he wasn't seriously hurt. He had some red stuff coming out of various places and um, skeletally intact, neurologically intact. Um, we just wanted it to cover him up, keep him warm and keep him stable in, until the emergency services got there. A bystanders with first aid qualifications tend to follow the blood. You know, you see a bit of blood and they, they want to mop it up or cover it or, or do some kind of nursery shit to it. Um, so it was good. I could just uh, grab the um, 
dressings and badges module or the cuts and abrasions module i gave one module to each first aider they were quite happy you know sifting through the band-aids and wrapping little gauze bandages on the guy it works really really well so that's another distinct advantage for having this modular system burns and eye care like even if it's on yourself if you've got an eye care problem if you've just got a foreign body on in your eye uh, and you want to reach for your irrigation or your lavage or your eye bath or or your eye patches and stuff like that then you're not in the mood to go sorting through a thousand different other types of dressings to find uh, similarly again if it's me if it's I'm the person that needs eye care I don't want to be directing people that don't know what they're doing to try and find a bit right bit of kit they can just grab this eye module happy days you know they can give me the eye module and everything's going to be inside it what's in the eye module um, it's got some tape, some iPads, some eye wash ampules, um, treatment um, card and some gloves and I often keep an eye bath in here as well. So it is what it is, like I said, your first aid kits, as I said before when you're making your own, you should be absolutely familiar with everything everything in here. If you want, and I do, supplement your kit. I've, I've supplemented my, my trauma kit, I'm going to be putting the tourniquet in there. Um, I'm probably going to be supplementing my uh, snake bite kit because quite often they've got the wrong kind of kit and for me I just just like some compression bandages and, um, and that's about it for me and I try and cut the triangular bandages sometimes they have some other funky stuff in this guy here um, they've, they've also got some um, some instructional manuals as well so look this is it this is my uh, first aid kit my modular first aid kit that I carry in my vehicle so I guess you can call it a vehicle first aid kit it works for me um, I think as far as it goes um, it's a good kit you know even at nighttime use then you, if you want to use it as a marker like if you're on the side of the road it happens all the time isn't it your side of the road you're virtually invisible depending on what kind of kit you're wearing you want to be seen by the motorists okay I've got some LED flares in here and stuff like that for um, for uh, vehicle safety I've got do you keep silent night sticks in here the list goes on doesn't it as to what you can contextualize your kit with but uh, as a basic kit with a basic bag it's got this nice 3m reflective retro reflective stripe on so even if you do be in pitch black or if you're in a remote area like if you've gone down that hill you know there's been times when I've, I've uh, stopped at the roadside and there's down an embankment no lights anywhere um, so when emergency services or other people rock up with the torches you know this stuff glows like a fucking halo um, uh, and they can they can track you down straight away because believe me when you're down that bank and you want you want to help then you want people to know where you are so like I said this 3m reflective um, not could have been in a tactical environment you know you don't really want to be going out like a fucking halo in a tactical environment do you but um, we're not tactical at the moment are we we're, we're we're happy joes we're in suburban areas and you know that's that's about it so look if you like my kits, uh, I can do more of these. Uh, like I said, this is a request for some some dear friends of mine, uh, Glenn and Damien uh, and the rest of you, you, you know, that have contacted me and said, look, mate, Je Jezza, can you please do some vehicle kits? So this is in response to that. If you're watching this channel, if you like it, then you know, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, there'll be lots more. Um, now we're getting out of the old good old covid fuckery then um then hopefully life will be getting back to normal we can cover some more things we'll be going out and about camping we'll be going out and about testing some other out, outward gear uh mark will be doing some some stuff on the stuff that mark does really well that's great so give us a thumbs up like us subscribe us um if there's any bits and pieces you want to know about first aid just uh yeah just click down below and um engage with me more than happy to help okay so for now, this is my first aid kit, my vehicle first aid kit that I've bought off the shelf with a few modifications. Um, happy days. So until next time, let's go.